I know it's a fourth quarter game, so you get credit for figuring out Iowa later on. What did you think about the offensive execution there from a uh, quarter and a half to quarter, especially the red zone? Yeah, um, an interesting game when you, when you start off with so many balls and plus cards over there. You know, you look at uh, the end of the game, um, where the score could even been different, you know. Um, but, you know, Iowa does a very, very good job up front, and you know, they take away so many things in the middle. And force you really, you know, throw the ball. And, um, you know, we, we didn't do as good of a job of executing running the ball early on. But we knew that it was going to take time to crack. It's just the way they are. And, um, and so uh, I thought we played really um, you know, good football there in the second half, got a good, good balance going a little bit. But I mean, that, that kind of goes back to what we're talking about, you know, is when someone's going to stop one thing, you got to be able to do the other. And um, I would have liked to definitely execute better on offense uh, early in the game. But I think the story is about the defense and how well they played. But, um, but good to finally pull away there in the second half. Over to the left, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Brian, well, it looks like Jackson tweaked something there, and we didn't see him come back to the game. Just you know, that you have on. Yeah, he was on a pitch count today, and then once he got uh, to a certain number there, we just had to shut him down. Uh, over, over here to the right, Dylan Davis, Delaware, the, the Gazette. For an offense, it's been coming along like it has. Is there something to be said for winning a game like this, where you just kind of grind and keep at it, keep at it, and finally things start opening up? That, that, yeah, that's it. I mean, that, and that's, that's um, I guess not what we're used to here, but uh, that's the reality of it. And um, you know, certainly the, the fact that it was 56 points on the board, a big part of that was the defense today. But um, you know, when you're playing against a really good defense, a top 10 defense, it's not gonna just gonna happen all at once. You know, it's not gonna be fireworks every series. But um, you know, I, I give uh, Noah credit. We were able to put points on the board and keep that momentum going. And um, we felt like our defense was playing well. And, and um, we felt like if we had scored, you know, a few of those touchdowns on there in the red zone, it would have been a different first half. But um, but, but that's okay, lots to learn from there and grow. Uh, over to the left hand, oh, 11, 11 Warriors. Hey Ryan, it seemed like Zach Harrison came out with a lot of energy today. Is that something you noticed too? And just what do you make of the way that he played today? Yeah, I, I think he was one of a, uh, a few guys who played with that type of energy. I thought uh, Zach's playing some of his best football right now. And um, our defensive line, you know, they're playing with an edge. Uh, if you can feel it out there, you can see how fast they're playing. Uh, but Zach has uh, really come along, he's practiced really well, I thought his leadership's been good, and um, I think you guys would agree he's probably playing his best football right now. Over to the right, Bill Landis, Rivals. Right, you guys um, had to burn a couple timeouts down in the short red area on, on offense. Just in those moments, what, what's happening? Like, what are you seeing? And then when you're on the sideline talking it out, what are those conversations like? And what did you think of the execution coming out of those moments? Well, uh, I get frustrated with myself uh, first because um, you know, there's just so many scenarios you try to go through down there and we had a bunch of the pass down there and um, it's hard they do an excellent job in the red zone historically they've done a great job and you know you try to get exactly the right call uh, based on the hash based on where it is and um, certainly in the first half uh, you know, I think sometimes those those timeouts are a little overrated because you, you know typically you don't need it as much as you do in the second half so uh, when you're down in the red zone if you have the right play good if you don't uh, I think historically I've, um, you know, we've decided to take timeouts because we feel like we didn't have a really good look there. Uh, one in particular, we had a good play out. It wasn't the look we expected. There was a guy coming off the edge, and we knew we had a bad play call, so we got out of it. Um, another time, you know, we just wanted to think about it a little bit more. Another time, uh, Jackson, um, I think the ball was on the ground, maybe, and it was piled up on the ground. And, um, you know, they, they, they rewound the clock at 25, but it went really fast. So by the time they got it, we looked up, it was like at 12 seconds, and I just didn't feel like at that time we wanted to run a play that wasn't a good play. And um, you know, my fault, but I was, you know, in those moments, I, I know how important those, those moments are. We know how those, important those moments are. We always want to get you know, the right call. We work so hard for that, you know. That, um, and so most of it, I just get frustrated with myself. Over to the left, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Brian, by his standard, CJ, and so so first half, I threw the tape on the first play, second half. Betty got the end of the late straight completions, four touchdowns. What, what clicked for him in the second half? I think we just had to get into a rhythm on offense. And uh, when, when you game plan, you know, you, you pretty much start your, your mindset of the minus 25, somewhere in there. And then you have plays that you work, and then you kind of get yourself into the red zone. And um, it was weird because we were kind of in plus territory all day early on. And it just never got into a rhythm of just kind of throwing things in because the field was getting a little compressed. And I think you saw it when we had to move the ball down the field, we were a little bit better, and he got no rhythm that way. That's probably the only way I could uh, describe why that was. But um, yeah, I mean, they're very, very good. They get their hands on balls. Um, 
you know, we had the, the one sack fumble early on, you know, I mean, they, but we, we, we overcame it and we kept pushing through and we know that we're playing against good defenses and let some things like that happen. But we can't continue to let those things happen. We've got to learn from them and grow. Uh, but I think it was healthy for us to get a good challenge today. Over to the right, Spencer Holbrook, let him in row. Ryan, the Iowa offense is what it is, but is there something you said for your defense to be able to deal with good defense do against an offense like this? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, started right from the get-go, and I thought we were aggressive. Uh, I thought Jim called a great game, but the guys played well. They ran to the ball, created the turnovers, played hard, played physical, and, um, and it you know, didn't let up the whole game. And I, I think we had, what, six turnovers and at least a couple fourth down stops. So, um, you know, when we play like that, it's great. So we've got to learn what we did well and figure out what we need to move on. And uh, we know we've got a big challenge next week going to State College. Uh, the fourth row, uh, middle and the left, Rob Aller, Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, back to uh, Zach for a minute. Here's a kid who's a local kid. He comes in, a lot of pressure, playing in the shadow of the Boses, Chase. Uh, is this just one of these situations you always talk about? Everyone has their own journey. How proud are you of him to get through that, fight through that? Well, uh, very. Um, it started with, with recruiting. Uh, Zach was one of the, the first recruits. Um, you know, for me and, and Larry, we went into the home, and um, I'll tell a quick funny story about that. Um, wasn't sure how I was going to go into recruiting. I, I just been named the head coach, and Larry and I went to the home, and Tracy and the family were there, and went through the home visit, and I, and I gave him a Buckeye at the end, and I said, this is a Buckeye, I want you to have this. And he says, he looks at me, looks at me, he says, you know, Buckeyes are poisonous, coach. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I, I walked out, I said, Larry, we ain't getting back. <laughs> And uh, about a week later, Larry comes in. I remember where I was because it was very important for us because that was highly recruited. He was a local kid, a local Tangy Orange. Obviously, a tremendous talent um, and a great culture fit for us. And um, and uh, Larry walks in and says, "Is that going to be a Buckeye?" He got on the phone and he committed. And it was that was a big deal for us. And you know, he came in highly recruited. Um, but you know, he can, when you look at Zach, he's, he's got long levers and he's really tall. And he's had to grow into the position, grow into his body, and that doesn't just happen. It takes time. And I know everybody wants him to come in and, and you know be an All American as a freshman, but everybody, like you said, has their own journey. And he's been on that journey. And I think he's made a lot of sacrifices. He's worked through some tough times. And uh, and you're seeing the best version of him right now. We're going to go just a few more because we got players starting to come up over here to the right. Justin Bolbrock, WCMH. What did you see from uh, Jordan Hancock this first game back, especially the camp round out today? Yeah, I saw a good week of practice and then uh, made a few plays. Uh, and he does a really good job of playing the ball and uh, excited to get that uh, game under his belt so that we can build on that moving forward. Uh, over to the left, Cameron T. Robinson, The Athletic. Brian, you mentioned the calls from Tom in the red zone. And you get some really in the red zone on the year. When you look at this game, do you look at it as like, hey, we still scored even though we kicked those field goals? Or do you look at it like, we need to turn those field goals into touchdowns? Like, oh, touchdowns, touchdowns. That, that's it. That's all we focus on. Now, we can get field goals so that we need to get points, and, and those are important to get. But, yeah, um, you know, I wish we had calls back, I wish we had plays back, but the, the number one goal is to score touchdowns in the red zone. That's a huge part of our plan to win. Uh, we've been good in that in the past, uh, not as good today. Uh, over to the right, play all the SYX. Multiple choice. Tommy Eichenberg, he's been a great tackler today. He's a pass catcher. Mm -hmm. Do you need more from the running game as you go forward? That was a concern late in the year last year. What, how about the run? The run game. Yeah, oh okay. yeah. We'll have to look and see see what we did well, or what we, we need to improve on, um, and, and where we need to um, you know tighten up, um, and you know kind of evaluate from there. I'm sure the numbers don't look great, uh, but there were some good things, and I think there was um, it was a sack, right? So I mean that, that may have affected that, you know, on the, on the fumble. So uh, again, we'll look at it, assess it, and figure out where it's at, but um, you know we want to be balanced. Are, but are you not concerned because of so much talent in the receiving door? I don't know if concern is the right thing, but you know we're going to have to go back and figure out how we run the ball better. That's for sure. Um, and figure out how we're going to do that. But uh, but that's every week. I'm going to throw the ball better. That's figure out how to um, you know score points in the red zone better. That's, that's every week. But uh, to say I'm concerned, I wouldn't say that. But uh, we're going to need better play moving forward. Uh, over to the left, uh, last one on the left, Pat Murphy, 24/7 Sports. Ryan, you touched on some of the turnovers early in the year. You guys weren't getting those. You've now gotten them pretty consecutively, and then obviously the big breakout today. How important is it to have that start rolling as you get into this late stretch of the season here? Yeah, it's very important. And like you said, the challenges are going to get bigger and bigger. And so you know, we need, uh, you know, we, we need 
balance across the board. We need complementary football. We need special teams. We, you know, we need we need everything. We need all of them. But, but again, this this is a very good team coming in here. You know, they they played uh, a team up north really well. It was twenty to seven in the fourth quarter. Uh, they played Illinois really well. You know, they had a fumble return to go win the game. They called it back, and then Illinois kicks the field goal to win the game. But you know, Illinois, you know, had a really good year. They played some good teams, and uh, we we had a lot of respect for this team coming in, and uh, and, and they played well, especially on defense. And uh, so for us to win like this, it's good, but there's still a lot to lot to improve on, and a uh, lot to grow from, like you said. Last two for coach, we're going to go Nathan Barrett, Cleveland.com, and then Tim May, Letterman Row on three. I just wanted to clarify, like Jackson came out of the game, it seemed like he was really stretching that leg out. He was talking to medical personnel. So that route was gonna be his last route that he ran today. I just wanted to clarify that. And can you talk about, I guess, were you able to evaluate him enough today as to what he saw from him, how to move that sort of thing? I think so. Yeah, I think we'll be able to evaluate it and watch the film and see. But we had about 20 plays. I think he was right in that range. And um, once he got to that number and that drive, that was it. Right. What, what is it like to have an offense at your disposal that you're trying to crack that safe first half? You know, and I know you call plays you think are going to work, or right. help, but they don't. But but you have this passing game that just revved up in the second half. What is it like calling plays for an offense like this if you follow my draft? Because Iowa impressed me as much on defense today as they have all year. Yeah, sure. y'all score 54. Go ahead. Well. Uh, Tommy, Tommy scored one of those. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Uh, we'll, give some, we'll give Tommy credit for yeah. that one. Um, yeah. But no, I think it all went to the defense and the way the defense put the offense in a great position to score. Um, but but it was it was a strange game that way because there were so many turnovers and we were in plus territory, just didn't finish the drives. But um, you know, I don't know how many times we punted. Um, okay, we punted three times. One was at the end. Yeah. So uh, kind of strange, you know, when you look at it. We didn't have a lot of drives that started like on the twenty yard line and move them across the field. But uh, but to answer your question, um, you know, it's. We have great weapons. We have to continue to figure out ways to find that balance. Um, we've got to continue to practice well so that we can execute well because these plays and um, you know, these matchup games are going to become more and more important. So the March Fair is going to be timing and timing. But you always feel there's something on that sheet that's going to work eventually. Is that the way you personally go into a game like this? That something on that play sheet's going to work? Well, I, I think, you know, it's like if they're taking this away, then they, they probably are giving up something here. Yeah. And they certainly were doing a great job stopping the run. So typically, you know, they, they have to give up something on the perimeter, and um, and then I think we can find that there in the third, fourth quarter. Yeah. 